this video is probably going to become irrelevant because today is Wednesday, like Wednesday night, and tomorrow is Thursday, which means it's Critical Role Day, which means, yeah, something's probably going to happen that's going to mean everything I've said is going to be like, Whack. but hey, I wouldn't be me if I didn't say stuff that isn't necessary most of the time. The thought comes into my brain and <sighs> comes out and this is how things like this channel occur. All right, so <laughs> this video is a defense of Lucian or the Nonagon. So while watching Critical Role recently, I have found myself in a really weird position, especially weird for me, because as many of you may know, I've done a video on it, which I will link somewhere. Um, Molly Mork means a great deal to me, is the one character, not just in Critical Role, but in most of media that I have related to greatly and just means a great deal to me in general. However, I find myself not only wanting to defend, but also kind of starting to side with the very guy who quite literally took Molly Mork's place and body and everything. I'm going to explain myself, okay? I still absolutely love the Mighty Nine, I love every single player and I love every single character. It's just that some of the things they're doing at the moment, um, <laughs> are, I think they are teetering on the knife edge of, like, having consequences for actions. And just because you're a player character doesn't mean your plot armour goes infinitely in every direction. And I think that they are towing the water of the consequences of what they're currently doing. Not all of them actually just as being a dream, um, which I'll go into. But yeah, so to explain this a whole lot better, I'm going to break it down and we'll look at things from Lucian's point of view. All right, so you're Lucian. You are killer charismatic. You're a purple tiefling. You're amazing. You're freaking brilliant. Um, your life is going pretty chill. You're in a group. You manage to splinter off and make your own group. You've got goals. You've got ambitions. You're going to go do this thing. And then some absolute B word betrays you. And you're not just robbed of power or money. You are essentially murdered. Like, Vess killed him. And you're not just dead. Your soul is scattered. And this probably hurts. They touch upon it in Harry Potter Law, splitting the soul can do a number of different things but in in loads of different places we see this you know having your soul broken into pieces that's not gonna that's not gonna feel pleasant and you are adrift broken and alone drifting in this just infinite void of presumably pain loneliness and not quite dead that's gonna suck and then all these pieces manage to come back together after such a long time and you are brought back to your own body. You're back with your group again. You're going to go off and do the things that you want to do. You're going to achieve all the goals you want to achieve. So far, so good. Then it turns out that another group is following you. All right. Then it turns out that the person leading them is the very B word who killed you and dusted your soul out. Yeah, you go get revenge on that B word immediately, hopefully painfully, but this group is still following you. You've got some fairly powerful magic and you notice that they scry on you quite a few times. So these people are following you and spying on you. So you look into that, you work out a few things and eventually you guys meet. It turns out that while your soul was splintered off and you were lost and lonely, someone else, maybe a fragment of you, you're not quite sure, was in your body walking around living a life. And that's the person that this group has been looking for. And you are not them. So you talk to them. You are as understanding as you can be, even though you don't remember anything about it. And it's kind of a really weird situation. And eventually it becomes super clear that this group, the Mighty Nine, are not getting what or rather who they want out of the situation. However, they are interested in what you are currently doing. So you share a bit with them and eventually they decide to continue following you. Then comes the real kicker turning point. 
You see, this group who were following you then overtake you. They go to the location they knew you were going to and they take the item that they knew you wanted. So fairly naturally, you go after them. You confront them about it. They don't give you the item. They are quite rude to you. You're quite rude back. They ask lots of questions of you and your group demanding to know more. But when you turn the tables and ask them things, they do not want to tell you a thing. Eventually, you then decide to travel together as a group. Partly now, because you presumably want to keep an eye on these people who have still got the item that they are refusing to give you. All the while, they do continue to be pretty darn rude to you. So of course, you're pretty rude back. Bear in mind that these people sought you out. You invited them to come along, you answered their questions, you tried to help them understand that you are not the friend that they have lost, and despite you having some limited sympathy for them about it, you still want to get on and live your life. So you guys travel on through the snow, through the cold, them antagonising you the entire way. And when you guys stop for the night, they cast a magical invisible place and then they just hop into it with the item that you are still trying to keep an eye on. So of course you confront them about this because you want to keep an eye on the item that they have still got and they have quite literally vanished into thin air with. When all you get back is a lot of really rude comments and accusations, you snap a little bit. You dispel their magic and they all come out and they have to spend the evening with everybody. It's fairly fair, you're all travelling as a group, you each want to keep an eye on the other. But what does this other group start doing immediately? They start poking and prodding and being rude and sassing you and all of this stuff. Until right at the very end of last episode, one of them was actually quite sweet and did a tarot reading for you. So that is a very condensed version of events from Lucian's point of view. Now despite how much I dearly love every member of the Mighty Nine, Given all of that, I'm watching this and I'm going, nah, he has a point, I can see where he's coming from. Because every time they asked a question but refused to answer one back, it sort of felt very hypocritical. And it's like, I'm kind of rooting for both of you at this point because you've both got a point. Like, yes, I wouldn't trust the team takers, what they're doing is clearly dodgy. But to them, it's not. To these guys, they are just doing the thing they're doing the thing that they've set out to do and they they're working for this deity you know they're doing all the stuff they want to do and these people have just shown up and started interfering with their plan and the only real connection they have to your group is that while you were dead they were friends with the guy who was in your body <laughs> for a few years man that never stopped being weird <laughs> so absolutely no hate to the mighty nine whatsoever i still love them i just i can see lucian's point of view 100% because he is not getting from them what they're demanding of him and I think it should be more equal. I just like to focus on the really antagonizing behavior towards Lucian. Now yeah I will admit I laughed the first few times you know it's it's fun to poke the bear sometimes but there comes a line and a point. Now I'd like to flip it just think about this for a second. I'm sure most people have had some experience with being pushed and prodded and jabbed at by somebody who just enjoys trying to get a rise out of you or a reaction. They think it's funny, they keep poking at you, they're saying things, they're being rude, they're taking the mickey, they're doing all these things trying to get you to break or snap or cry or whatever it is they're trying to get you to do. And to them, it's really funny. And after a while, you can't ignore it anymore. And eventually, after someone jabbing and jabbing and jabbing, anyone would snap. The thing is though that Lucian hasn't properly snapped yet and if he does it's going to be a whole lot worse than just dispelling some magic. We've seen leftover bodies of how he has killed people, we have watched him kill somebody. Blood pours out of every orifice so I think that funny as it might be to get somebody to go yes fine I'm lost even though it was your role that did that. It's funny yes but it's also really dangerous. After a while, I was sat there watching, digging my nails into my face, convinced like someone's gonna die. You're gonna get someone killed. Stop talking. You've got more than only two options. You haven't got sass Lucian and be rude or kiss his boots and love him forever. There's a whole middle ground you could be doing. And that conveniently brings me to my last point about Jester. Now, Jester, I think, got the most out of Lucian she got him to reveal the most without even saying it. And she did it through a really sweet tarot card reading. And she got the best interaction. He actually sat down, he spoke to her, he chose the cards, he listened to what she said. And we got so much from his reactions that we hadn't had before. 
what we had been getting is him reacting to being poked and prodded at and niggled. That was him on the verge of snapping. That was him on the verge of being angry. That was him quipping back and being back and forth, being rude to each other. That's not finding out more about a character. That's just seeing how many buttons you can push before the thing explodes. Jester, and actually arguably Yasha when she gave him the four leaf clover, that told us quite a lot about him as well. But you see those two moments. So here, we've got two. We've got Yasha giving him the Foolish Clover and we've got Jester doing him the tarot reading. Both amazing moments that have fantastic art, by the way. But that's the difference, though. Those two moments were not antagonistic at all. They were quite sweet and on the level. No one was trying to outdo and up the other. They were just engaging in a conversation. And I think that's the way to go here. I just think that if you continue to push at and antagonize somebody, that increases the likelihood that you will have to fight them later. And it also increases the likelihood that he is gonna double cross you. Whereas if you try and stay relatively neutral towards each other, that could have interesting implications later. I'm not gonna get into the whole, is Molly still in their debate? Because honestly, I'm not sure. I can see the arguments, but I also think it's just as fun if he's not. I really enjoy Lucian as a character. I think he's kick-ass and great, and there is tiny bits of Molly in there. Or rather, there is bits of Lucian and Molly, both ways. I really love Lucian. I love his character. I think he's great, and I want to see where this goes. And I kind of low-key want him to get to the city, because I really want to see that. But I just worry that currently we're in a bit of danger of shoving Lucian into the same box that characters like Joffrey or Draco Malfoy from like books one, two and three are in, you know, that just rude antagonist who you poke at because it's fun to see them explode and then they fail. He's more than that. And I think we do him a great disservice by shoving him into that and just treating him like that because as I said, Jester and Yasha got the best interactions with him and they weren't treating him that way. So my request would be that we treat Lucian more like Draco Malfoy in book six and seven, you know, troubled, got some stuff going on, got a really dodgy plan he's trying to enact. But if you show them some kindness, there can be some decency there. And who knows, could be a happy ending for everybody. I will just add at the end here that I'm not shitting on anyone's playstyle. I absolutely love every single member of Critical Role and I think they're doing a stellar job. I'm just worried that they're going to get one of their number killed. So, eh. Thank you for listening from this Molly enthusiast and now Lucian enthusiast as well. Tatty bye.